this is the overall COVID cases um, that we're seeing by district. You've seen this before. Um, you can see the, the, we really have had four distinctive peaks. It's just that we weren't counting cases early on as aggressively as we could have. But you can see the, the um, peaks that we've had so far and how much higher the Omicron peak was than the previous peaks. If we zoom in on the most recent four weeks, we're seeing all districts decline at roughly the same rate. This high transmission line down, down here is the line that CDC de currently defines as um, being a, an indication of high community spread. Um, if we look by age groups, the zero to 17s peaked a little bit later than the other age groups because that's roughly when they went back to school here in mid-January, but all age groups are declining too. So the, the trends are all pointing in the right direction um, epidemiologically in terms of what we expect. If we look at the weekly snapshot um, that we look at at UAB in terms of what's happening, you can see that weekly cases per 100,000, again, CDC wants that under 100. We're at about 150 in Jefferson County and 156 statewide. This is half of what it was last week and it's been um, decreasing by half for the past three weeks. So we're seeing a really steady decrease. That's also resulting in a decrease in hospitalizations. We're actually dropping off by nearly 100 hospitalizations per day statewide, which is the most rapid decline in hospitalizations that we've seen on any of the four peaks. Uh, you know, interestingly, again, UAB cases among staff and faculty and students are decreasing at the same rate they're cutting in half, but they have always been much higher than what, what's reported in the state overall and what's reported in Jefferson County for reasons that we've talked about in terms of us being a mandatory reporter and having easy access to testing. So the, the big question is how do we forecast out when we're gonna be at some level that might be safe to, um, to change some of our COVID behaviors. And this gives you a feel for what we've seen with the Omicron surge in the US, Alabama, Jefferson County, and then among UAB employees and UAB students. Uh, one of the interesting things, if you look at this curve, the Omicron peak for UAB employees was actually the first week um, in January, January 10th. So we saw a really early Omicron peak, and now we've seen rapid descent um, down to where it's almost in line with the other groups we're looking at. The uh, UAB student peak was slightly later than the UAB staff and faculty peak, but it's actually quite possible <laughs> that this peak also is up here and then rapidly plummeted because it's quite likely students were not reporting cases to us when school was not in session. Um, I think that's, a, that's actually something that could have happened. So that's interesting too, if you look at where the UAB student peak is versus Alabama, Jefferson County in the US. Um, but if we blow up the February 14th to March 28th area and, and now forecast out what should happen if the declines continue at the same rate, we're looking at somewhere between um, early March and mid-March when we get below that target of 50 per 100,000, which current CDC mask guidance indicates that you need to be below 50 per 100,000 before considering removing masking requirements. Um, so that gives you a feel for when we might hit those deadlines. Now, all of this is a little bit squishy because CDC met with the Biden administration on Wednesday and we know they're gonna update their guidance next week. So what, it, what their guidance is gonna be, if it's 200, 250, 100, we have no idea, but we know new mass guidance is coming. Um, the early indications in the news, and I don't have any folks at CDC that know better, maybe you guys do, but from what I've seen in the news, it sounds like they're gonna base their targets on outcomes rather than cases, so hospitalizations and deaths. A um, Couple of things to think about as we're forecasting cases, they're, the, BA.2 Omicron variant is increasing in proportion in the US and second Omicron waves have been recorded in Europe as certain group, um, countries have opened. Uh, most of Scandinavia is open and when they opened, they saw a second Omicron peak um, and most of it is BA.2. So I, I think we just have to watch that because we are also considering reopening here in the US and, and may see similar um, surges, especially given that there's a new variant. If we wanna understand deaths, I, what I kinda of wanted to leave folks with is how we can think about what CDC may or may not suggest as they look at it. And one of the ways to do that is to, understanding, to understand deaths and hospitalizations. Um, it's the, the end goal, so it's really not the best target, but it gives you a feel. These are all the mortality, cumulative mortality curves since the start of the pandemic. Um, and they're deaths per 100,000. 
This top line is New York. You can see that, that that's that early April 2020 surge when um, there was very little known about the disease and New York had very high mortality. So anytime you see this line go straight up, that's an indication of high numbers of deaths and then kind of the flattening and the, the rising again um, corresponds to peaks. If we look at Alabama, Mississippi, Georgia, um, we were very low early on, but have pretty steadily charged ahead um, so that once we get to February of 2022, um, Mississippi actually has the highest number of deaths per person. Um, Alabama, we're about fifth currently. So it's, it's important to note that there probably are some disparities um, as, we, as we look across various states. The state that's performing the, the um, best in terms of deaths is California. Uh, they're very low, you know, way down here um, at 206 total per 100,000. So this is where I think we can start benchmarking ourselves. Um, that this is where people are going to start asking, well, what's the role of community interventions? What have they done? And unfortunately, I think the only place where we have reliable data is going to be looking at deaths. Um, so. It, be, just because of the fact that we don't have widespread testing. Um, so, so cases are not gonna be the best estimate of it. These are data that we could continue to look at going forward as we wanna try to understand the impact. CDC has these data on their website um, by age, by race, by sex. So we could start looking at some of these types of analyses if, if people on the call agree with me that this might be a good target to help understand some of the metrics as we look to reopening. And it really sounds from my read of the, the news, the um, other countries are starting to say, it's time for this to be not a public health intervention, but an individual health intervention. And I, I don't understand what that means exactly, but I think we can help to guide some of that. This is New York's epi curve. And again, with all of the caveats about daily cases, this is still, this is really remarkable. I mean, this is a, a state that's several times the size of Alabama in population, and, and yet now their daily new daily case counts um, just about double that of, of Alabama rather than many fold. But, you know, the hope is, is that we can anticipate um, experiencing a similar curve. If you look at at the Alabama um, ADPH's um, surveillance map. Now this week for the first time, it's not all red. Um, there are actually some lighter colors ind indicating um, both substantial and moderate uh, transmission. So again, uh, although this is case count, um, Still, it's more encouraging than not, I'll put it that way.